So I saw a headline this morning, the weirdness of Kevin Durant leaving. I don't think there's anything weird about leaving Brooklyn in that tire fire. I think it's weird that he left the Warriors and Steph Curry. Now I'd leave Brooklyn. Ben Simmons, Kyrie Irving, that ownership, young head coach. I don't think there's anything weird about it at all. Kevin's a hard guy to figure out. I'm not a psychologist. I'll let somebody else do the work there. Um, but he's a superstar, and in the NBA, superstars make demands, and they get their way all the time, and so he's going to get traded. Of course, we all know the best place to go. I mean, in terms of the best team where you'd win the most games, it's Golden State, the champs. They won before him. They won with him. They won after him. That's the best place to go. They have the most assets easily. They could make a deal this morning. James Wiseman, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole. Guard, wing, big. And the Nets would be off and running and fun to watch. They could rebuild their team one one way, one deal. That's it. Phoenix and Miami can't make that deal. But KD left Steph Curry. Never felt loved. Could he go back? I would. I said this with Baker Mayfield. I'll say it with Kevin Durant. Winning solves virtually everything. Winning in sports is like money to a lot of people. If I told you your commute was going to be two times longer, but you could make three times as much, most of you would suck it up and do it. You win in sports, Baker Mayfield going back to Cleveland or Kevin Durant going back to Golden State. The laughs are longer. The snide comments go away. It's more fun. There's a lot of plane trips. It's a lot more fun with trophies in your hand making those plane flights. He's looking, Kevin's looking for the perfect place to land. It doesn't exist. Oh, wait, it does. Golden State, owner, GM. He was there before. Familiarity, winning, culture, Steph Curry. It's the perfect spot. But I don't think he'd go because he's prickly and he's sensitive and he'd get pushback. All public figures get pushback. It's called social media. But Kevin's more sensitive to it. Would Golden State take him? Well, Marcus Thompson, the person I trust most covering the Warriors, says Golden State has contacted Draymond Green, Steph Curry, and Clay Thompson. They are in the loop, and they've been told KD's a possibility. I would do it if it was a steal. Wiseman for Wiggins, Wiseman, Wiggins for KD. I would do it tomorrow. But KD's a lot of work. KD is older now. He's had a few more injuries now. I'm not selling the farm to get KD. I'm not a desperate franchise. In fact, and everybody knows this, Kevin Durant needs Golden State far more than Golden State needs Kevin Durant, and he knows it, and I don't think he likes that. This is the place to go, right? Like, they won before you, they won with you, they won after you, you're an enhancer, they're not building around you. I don't know if he could handle it, but it's the place to go. Kevin Durant to Golden State, the odds in Vegas would dramatically change tomorrow as probably the biggest favorite since he last got there or Kobe Shaq. He goes to Miami. He goes to Phoenix. I'm not sure they're favorites. They're better. I'm not sure they're favorites. But I don't think he's got the stomach for it. I don't think Kevin Durant has the stomach to get the pushback. He just signed a four-year deal. He's going to be 30, what, four years old. It's probably the last big deal. And I always think professional athletes should leave on top. The John Elway style, the Derek Jeter style. You could argue, you know, you win that last championship in the NBA, LeBron, bubble, Los Angeles. You could have signed off right there. Warriors will make this deal if it's a screaming deal. If it's Wiseman Wiggins, no draft picks, no Jordan Poole. They'll make that deal. I don't think he could stomach it. But I'll give him credit for this. If you make a mistake in life, don't grab a shovel and keep on digging. Like, get out of it. Move on. He's a superstar. They have the ability to do that in this professional league. So for that, I give Kevin Durant credit. But I would not sell the farm for him. I saw this morning, they're reporting in Phoenix. Phoenix would like him. They're not giving up the farm for him. Folks, injuries, age, he's hard to wrap kind of your arms around. He doesn't like that. He makes sudden impulsive moves. I mean, he left Golden State. We were like, what? He left Brooklyn. People said, what? I'm not building my franchise around that. It can enhance it, but it can't be the soul of the team, and I'm not giving you all my assets.
I know it sounds crazy, right? Because he's so good. But Phoenix today won't. Golden State won't. And I don't think Pat Riley and Miami would. LeBron James reportedly wants the Lakers to add Kyrie Irving. Kyrie is in Los Angeles. And uh, I wouldn't be shocked if he and LeBron have connected. Uh, LeBron reportedly is very interested in having him on the team. So let's start with this. For even the best basketball players in the world in my life, winning championships is really hard. It was hard for Jerry West. Uh, Carl Malone never won a ring. Either did Stockton or Charles Barkley. It was hard for Wilt. Michael Jordan took a physical beating, retired twice. Magic retired early. Bird retired early. He fell apart physically, did Larry. Uh, It's hard. D. Wade, he needed multiple stars to help him. LeBron, Bosh, Shaq. I believe LeBron is out of the title business. I don't think the Lakers, from the executive space to the ownership space to the roster space currently, um, I I don't think they have championship material, even with Kyrie Irving. They don't. Uh, But he makes them interesting and relevant. And LeBron, I think, is a smart enough player that he knows that even with Kyrie and AD, can you trust either physically? Can you trust... Kyrie emotionally. Can LeBron trust his body? He's averaging 55 games a year the last three years. I don't think it's a championship team. But LeBron at this point wants to remain relevant. Chasing Kareem's scoring title, that's relevant. Potentially playing with his son, that's relevant. Making the playoffs the next three years, that's relevant. You can't get there. LeBron's got plenty of great basketball left. You can't get there with Westbrook. And I'll give you an example. So LeBron is one of the great passers, maybe second to Magic Johnson I've ever seen, at driving and distributing. Those great passes, Westbrook misses that shot. Kyrie hits it. It's great statistically for you. Kyrie and LeBron are fun to watch and will be discussed. Even the star-focused media in the NBA checked out on Westbrook and LeBron. And I also think LeBron and AD and Kyrie, you can talk yourself into that team winning a title, though I wouldn't trust them. Nobody really in the building, including Darvin Ham, the new coach, thinks AD, LeBron, and Westbrook is a championship team. Literally, Westbrook can't play off the ball and can't shoot, has no self-awareness, does not defend, and won't listen. You're not going anywhere with Westbrook. I don't think the Lakers are in the championship window anymore. But I do think with Kyrie Irving, they're in the playoff business again, and they're in the relevant business again. And when you have a brand as big as Duke or Notre Dame or the Yankees or the Braves or or Ohio State football, Kentucky basketball or the Lakers, you can't not make the tournament. You got to be relevant. It's embarrassing. You have so many geographical, so many historic, so many, in the Lakers' case, uh, Mediterranean weather advantages. you got to make the playoffs. you got to be in the discussion in May and June. And so I think Kyrie, with all the issues, is a no-doubt-about-it slam-dunk move. I think LeBron wants it. I think Kyrie wants it. And once again, an athlete, a pro athlete, I know, you watch cable news, nobody wants to live in Los Angeles, But I think once again, it's a pro athlete that has a choice and they're interested in Los Angeles, even when the team isn't right. I always find this interesting. Um, And this is where I disagree. I separate from a lot of NBA fans. NBA fans think talent makes you a franchise player. I'm not building my franchise around John Wall, Russell Westbrook. They're talented. There's a big difference. It's not about talent. That's not it. Talent matters. But Steph Curry is reliable and fairly egoless and plays well with others. That's a franchise guy. So I was thinking about Kevin Durant this morning. Kevin Durant's great. But when he was with Golden State, two titles, MVP twice, and there was no question in the NBA. The two best players were considered to be LeBron and KD. That was not arguable. In fact, many of you, I wasn't one of them, but many of you believe Katie was better than LeBron. 
And I've always thought LeBron's just the, has been the most valuable player for 15 straight years in the league. Everything about LeBron, his distribution, his defense, his coaching, his intelligence, his dependability physically. I think LeBron's the better. Now, now there are nights KD's better, and there are stretches KD's better, and KD's a better shot maker usually, especially from distance. But to me, LeBron's always been the, the guy day in and day out. Um, but I think what's happened to Kevin Durant, I, I feel like the N- NBA right now is becoming a league, and I'm just talking about your top 15 stars, of uh, franchise builders and franchise enhancers. And the second one's where KD is at. Giannis, the best player in the league by most, you build your franchise around him. He's dependable emotionally, productive-wise, physically. And he's not going anywhere. Steph Curry, I can build my franchise around. Luka is the game's next great score for the next 15 years. Those are franchise builders. I'm a build around them. I believe Kevin Durant, because of his quirkiness, has become Kawhi Leonard and Anthony Davis. He's a franchise enhancer. I'm not selling the farm for them. Now, that's why Golden State and Kevin Durant worked, because he was a free agent. He was a cherry on top. You didn't have to give up the farm to get him. To get him now, I don't think Golden State should give up the farm. He's not somebody I'm going to build around. It was still Steph Curry's team when he was there. He's a franchise enhancer. He's AD and he's Kawhi. He's got titles. He can. He's the cherry on top. But emotionally, physically, I'm not building my franchise around him. And that's... The difference between my opinion on the NBA and 90% of fans. They look at your triple-double and think, I'm building around. Westbrook has no self-awareness. You can't build around Russell Westbrook. I said this when he was winning the MVP. You can't build around that. He doesn't make other players better. He's hard to coach. He plays one way. He can't play off ball. John Wall, similarly, great talent. Going to be a Hall of Famer, probably. I'm not going to build around him. you got to be dependable emotionally, dependable physically. Uh, are you coachable? Do you have multiple ways to beat me? Can you play on ball? Can you play off ball? Uh, are you good in crisis? That's why James Harden's a guy I can't build around. He's too quirky. He's too weird. It's okay. I don't believe in the word normal. But the closer you can get to normal and personality like Luca and Giannis and Steph, the more willing I am to build around you. And I think KD at this point is all these moves. I mean, leaving Golden State, frankly, was really bad judgment. And then pulling out of Brooklyn after three days earlier saying, I love it here and I'm happy here and it's all good here, is I can't build around him. That's why Phoenix this morning has come out. There are reports inside the building in Phoenix, and I'll read you. The Suns are very interested. They're not going to gut the team for him. That's John Gambadoro. There's no movement. Brooklyn wants a haul uh, and a half for Durant, and they're in total control of the situation. They determine where he goes, not KD or Phoenix. The Suns are interested, but they don't want to gut the team. And by the way, this is why KD worked with the Warriors. They did not have to gut the team. He was a free agent. So... Uh, And this is not a shot at KD, but that's the downside to constant mobility and like Kawhi Leonard's personality. He, he's not healthy. He doesn't talk. He's not verbal. He doesn't elevate others. He can elevate the team briefly. I always said with, with Kawhi Leonard, he was great in San Antonio because the culture was already there and he was great in Toronto because they already had a great coach and a great culture. The minute he goes to the Clippers and you're building around Kawhi Leonard doesn't work. He's not that kind of personality. And, and, and by the way, that's Kyrie Irving. When he was in Cleveland before LeBron, nobody liked him. He wasn't dependable. You build around LeBron, and then is Kyrie a series enhancer? A, 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 a team enhancer? Absolutely. Boston tried to build around Kyrie. Didn't work. Duke tried to build around him for a year. Played eight games. Didn't work. Cleveland tried it. Didn't work. So don't, don't confuse talent with franchise guy. There's, there's very few players in this league I would just pay the max money, always trust it. They're always there. They're grown-ups. I can, I can bring them into the office and yell at them or coach them up. I can be tough on them in front of other people. They've got a confidence that it doesn't go into the absurd or delusional. 
But but I think Katie's moved into that. He's an enhancer. He's not a guy I'm going to build around. And so if I was Phoenix, I wouldn't give up the franchise. If I was Miami, I wouldn't give up the whole franchise. If I was Golden State, I'd take him if he gave him to me for Wiggins and Wiseman. But I'm not going to give you four draft picks and Jordan Poole and Wiseman and Wiggins. I'm not doing it. They won without him. I'm not doing it. And that's, that's probably seen as a shot at KD. It's not. But that's, that's the downside to being the, uh, you know, the quirky and the wanderer and the uh, independent. It's like if I've said this with Aaron Rodgers. Is, is he doesn't have a three-year contract with the Packers. He's got three one-year contracts. The Packers admit that. Brady, I know where he's at. For 20 years, I know he's working in the offseason. That's the downside to being the artist and the wanderer and the intellect and the independent person. I'm not building around you. You can enhance me. I'm not, I'm not giving up my franchise for you.